I'm Carol Frank. I hope that you'll stick around and, and stay with us for the next half hour. Uh, I'm a member of the Great Neck Historical Society and one of the projects, one of the many fun projects we have is uh, an oral history program. And we're starting off today, we're using our, our guinea pigs, longtime <laughs> Great Neck residents, um, to talk about what it was like growing up in Great Neck. Uh, so I want to introduce Cookie Blaha and Bob Lincoln, and welcome. Good to be here. Good. Well, I'm going to start off with you, Cookie, let you be the first guinea pig, and uh, tell me. All right, I'll tell you. Okay, my name is Cookie Blaha, but my name was Hawkins, and I've always lived in Great Neck my whole life. I was born on Bernard Street. Actually, I was born at Mercy Hospital in Rockville Center because North Shore Hospital wasn't built yet, and people had I don't know where they went to have babies, but it wasn't around here. A lot of them at home, I guess. Well, my sister was born on Hicks Lane in 1939, so there you go. And Bernard Street is a very small block between Fairview Avenue and Croydon. And I lived there till I was eight years old. And my father had come back from the war, and he worked at Gilear Liquor Store on Middle Neck Road. It was up in the old village, and it was near the drugstore, but there was a liquor so store. So you had the drugstore and, and the, the liquor, liquor store. store. They handled all. Right, and, and he worked there. And uh, I went to St. Aloysius. All, I went through kindergarten through eighth grade at St. Aloysius School. And the funniest thing is we used to, I was really little, and we used to walk home for lunch. And I mean, I can't even fathom doing that today. I mean, you'd be accused of I don't know what. But we were, after kindergarten, at lunchtime, my friend Doreen Cortlander and I would walk home, or to my grandmother's, who also lived on Bernard Street, and we would have lunch, and then we'd walk back. And it seemed like a million miles. Now, if you do it, it doesn't feel like a million miles, but that's how it was. And uh, what else did we, oh, I was very busy with the Girl Scouts. That was one of the things we liked to do. My sister was a Girl Scout, and we were very active at St. Aloysius. My sister was in the band. And, um, and then when, uh, when I was eight years old, we moved to Steamboat Road near the Merchant Marine Academy. And I still went to St. Al's. And this is another funny thing. It was a mile away from St. Al's, so I wasn't entitled to the school bus. Right. So, <laughs> so we, used to, we used to try to get temporary passes. And when I couldn't get a temporary pass, and I was like nine, ten years old, I would take the town bus for a nickel, and they would drop us at St. Al's. Can you, I mean, that's what it was like back then, though. And did anybody lock their houses? No, no, of course not. We used to take the bus home and, no, if I got the bus. And, and then it, uh, and the weekends, I used to take the town bus because where I lived was right next to the bus stop. We used to go downtown and I'd go to Walls Record Store. Anybody from Great Neck remembers Walls? You remember Walls? Yeah, of course. A everybody went to Walls. And you'd buy like a 45 or something and then go down to the shopping center. And at Christmas, I'd take the money I collected and I'd go down and I'd buy all my Christmas presents at Woolworths and lug them back on the bus. And, uh, and oh, one other thing was Camp, I went to Camp Kalele Mook. And that was in Kings Point Park and it was run by the Girl Scouts. It was a day camp. And I used to take my bicycle there every single day from Steamboat Road. I drive down Kings Point Road, down Redbrook Road. And, and the camp didn't go anyplace else. It was just in the woods and they had tarps over the campgrounds. And it was great. I loved it. I thought it was like the greatest thing ever. So it was a camp just for girls? Just for girls. It was run by the Girl Scouts just for girls. And, and actually, the Girl Scouts had a camp out on the island called Camp Barstow. And it was donated by the Barstow family for, just for Great Neck Girl Scouts. And if you were really lucky, you got to go there for a sleepaway for two weeks or something. Did you go to camp? No. no so, went to Bob, camp where, where did you live? Well, um, when I, I was born at, what, at Nassau Hospital in Mineola, which is now Winthrop. Uh, my parents originally, when they were married, they lived in Great Neck Plaza, a couple of different apartment houses. Then they moved up in the old village. Um, I started school at uh, a kindergarten in what's now the village school. It used to be the youth center. And in the back room, they actually had a half-day kindergarten class. And uh, then I went to Baker Hill School 
originally the old building, the old wood building, and then they built the new building. We watched that being built uh, through the fifth grade, and then I went to private school after that through high school. Uh, but I grew up basically in, in the old village, and uh, it was a different world then. You could basically do whatever you wanted. You came home from school and you went out and you didn't come home until, you know, uh, they called you for supper. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. You see some of these things like on Facebook today when people remember, they go, well, when the noon whistle blew, the fire whistle, it was time for lunch. And in, in the summer, when you went out after dinner to play, you came home when the street lights came on. That was the rules. And uh, that's pretty much the, the, the way it was. It was a very adventurous time. So your mothers didn't time. drive you around for play dates and, and, uh, and activities? We made our own play dates. Yeah. Well, it's funny, we didn't know each other, even though we, right. I moved when I was eight, but before that, we really lived right around the corner from each other. And the one thing I remember about Bob's house is his claim to fame was on Halloween, his father somehow rigged up a skeleton that moved. And, and yeah, he used to climb a tree and we'd he'd lower it down in front of kids and he'd sit in the bedroom window and pull it up and, up and down. And uh, it was great sport. An engineer's, because uh, your yeah, dad was an engineer, right? He was an engineer, yeah. He, he figured out how to put a pulley in the tree and rig a, a, a string to raise it up. And, and when we were kids, we used to have to, my, I, this is something that really sticks in me, and Bob too. When we were little, you had to worry about polio. Yes. And our parents were desperately afraid that we were going to get polio. And I, we, we, well, first of all, neither one of us, and we've talked about this, were allowed to go in the pool in the Village Green because that was like the polio pool. A kid went there every day and he came down with polio and uh, that was the end of the waiting pool. Yeah. So there actually was, was a waiting pool there once upon a time. Yes. Oh, sure. Yes. So, oh, yeah. and that Village Green and Stepping Stones, those parks were there when you were kids, both of them? Yes. Oh, yes. Yep. Were most of the parks in Great Neck uh, the around? One, the ones in the old village, uh, Kings Point Park, certainly, Memorial Field, Allenwood Park. Uh, the newer p parks were more to the southern end later on. But, uh, yeah, all, the, all of those parks were... Uh, uh, developed uh, when the park district was started by uh, Mrs. Uh, Eldridge and they acquired land through the years and that's why they're, they're, they're quite old. Well why did your parents come here or they weren't they, they didn't grow up in Great Neck did they? No my father and mother both were here when they were children. They were? Yeah then my father's family moved around a lot and but he came back and but so because they were here they were you know and then he met my mother who was here so he went to Great Neck High I think he actually graduated from Mineola High but he did go to Great Neck High and it's my uncle was a senior at Great Neck High when he was 17 I told you this story but not everybody knows it my uncle and his friend built a boat went sailing and drowned he was 17 years old so that was a big family tragedy. I'm sure you remembered that. Oh, well, I, was, I wasn't born yet. It was in the 30s. Oh, but you heard them talk oh, about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And your folks? Well, my father uh, grew up in Massachusetts, went to the university. Well, it was Amherst College, and I was the University of Massachusetts. Moved to New York. My mother was from Brooklyn. Um, I suspect they moved to Great Neck because my father's first job in Great Neck was he worked for the Grace Estate. He was actually, he, was a, he studied engineering and botany. And he was actually their head gardener for a few years uh, in the early parts of the, of, of the Depression. So he worked on the, on the Grace Estate. And uh, um, then he got more into the engineering line. He was a local uh, engineer uh, who actually designed the Belgrave sewer system. And he, uh, he worked on that and that was his first actual uh, job in the 30s was also built in the by the WPA in the in the depression and then of course the war came along and that changed uh, everybody's lives in one way or another yeah and both of your fathers were in the war yeah yeah my father and my uncle and then I had one uncle that was he was a prisoner of war and where was he a prisoner from he was in the Battle of the Bulge he got captured and so that's why I have no first cousins my mother was an only child, and there you go. But when I was a kid, we used to, after I moved to Steamboat, we hung around the Merchant Marine Academy a lot. That was a big part of our neighborhood. 
in the, um, in the, every year on Saturday night, they would have movies down the academy, and the whole neighborhood would go down there, and they were 10 cents. Really? So there was a real uh, flow into, in and out of the academy? Oh, yeah. We, oh, we crawled around that academy like crazy. We used to go through the underground and everything. And, but the movies, that was a big deal. Movies, 10 cents. And it, whatever it was, we saw. So I saw a lot of really strange movies. <laughs> but it was fun. It was tough to do. It was great. It sounds like there was a lot of activities that you had. You had, uh, when did the ice skating rink open up? When did you have ice skating? 64? Something, something like that. Yeah, and didn't people used to skate on ponds? Well, we yeah. did, yeah, it used to freeze more than it freezes now. We skated, we would skate on the grist mill, but it hasn't free, it, it's just not frozen enough anymore. We then, and then there was a skating rink on Cutter Mill that a lot of people went to, and it was an indoor skating rink, and it became the Beaner Service Center. Right. And then it became a tennis court after that. But when, um, when we opened Parkwood, that place basically closed. And Parkwood wasn't enclosed. It was right. open. And there was a lot of controversy about enclosing that. Oh boy, that was a big fuss. Yeah. But it made sense because you couldn't really schedule hockey games if you didn't know if, what the weather was going to be like. And it, it was just better. So there, there was it. also skating in Memorial Field. A lot of us skated there. There was, uh, when I was a real little kid, they used to flood the tennis courts in the winter. Really? And it was cold enough that you, they'd get, you know, maybe it'd only be a couple of weeks, you know, in the, in the middle of the winter. And then before they built Parkwood, they actually built a, a rink at Memorial Field. Right. It wasn't re refrigerated. It was roller skating in the summer and then, then flooded in the winter. Yeah, but it almost never, ever, ever got used for ice skating. It was... You, you get maybe, maybe a couple of weeks in the, not, yeah, in barely. the middle of the winter. But we used to come home from school and we knew it was cold. We'd, we'd run down the back, uh, back way out of Baker Hill School and we'd go down to see if the red ball was up and if we could go skating at, at Memorial Field. So there was actually a red ball that was... They had like a sign that they hung up, but it was like, that's the traditional signal that they were, would use. That's what they used to do, yeah. yeah I used to go roller skating fun. there. I just yep. remember that it was a million degrees. It's where, if anybody knows um, Memorial, it's where the playground is. Mm -hmm. It was, ju it was, I just have visions of this big square, silvery kind of rink and, and it being very, very hot all the time. And the yeah. tennis courts, where were they in, back in the day? They were there. They were there. They were, they were there, there now. Yep. But, but nothing else was sort of, the rest was put, except for that rink, the field was open. Because uh, I have pictures from my, when my father had, was very young. And in the middle there was a water fountain. And that's all there was. I mean, you could just see the whole place was wide open. So, not that way anymore. No. Yeah. Well, now we have this uh, beautiful backdrop uh, <laughs> on the set today of uh, Stepping Stones Park. Uh, what's your first recollection of that park? Well, I lived near there, so yeah. I went down. I was there all the time. I would ride my bike down there. The Kings Point cops would yell at me for not having light on my bike. <laughs> I, 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 um, my, my uncle bought the bike from Sears down on Great Neck Road. There was a Sears. Really? Yeah, it was sure. a J.C. Higgins, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, and I, I would ride my bike down there, and my girlfriend had a sailboat. Her father got her a 14-foot sailboat, mast, single sail, and we would sail that. And then one of my other friends, Tracy Lowndes, her father was a local guy that everybody knew, Brock Lowndes. So he had, she had a boat, and it was really a terrible boat. So we decided <laughs> that we should fiberglass the bottom. So we're down to stepping stone. Just we, out of nowhere. Well, we, we Where do you gonna get fiberglass cookie? Yeah, uh, we bought it somewhere. I don't know. It came in sheets, and then you put this resin on it, and it worked. Except the boat then weighed about a thousand pounds. And and oh, Mr. Oh, I don't want to say old man Chechet, Mr. Chechet. Chechet, yeah, he was this guy that lived near Stepping Stone who knew a lot. He would come down and go. You know, this is not going to work. <laughs> but we, we did it anyway. I don't even know. I don't even remember what happened to that boat. But we worked all summer on it, and I, it's with the fiberglass and the resin. Oh, it's terrible. For me, going to Stepping Stone was really a special treat because um, we, the, the kids that I hung out with, usually we would head more south into town, and uh, we used to go to the Playhouse movie theater a lot. 
I want to uh, hear more about that. Uh, that mm. was, well, the trick was you buy a ticket and you go in the back and you open the fire door and let your friends <laughs> in if you really want to know. <laughs> and the fire door was never, was never locked and they knew it. <laughs> that was just part of the, part of the routine. But uh, that was... Well, you could I mean, do that at the Squire, too. Yeah, yeah, but the playhouse was really, because it had a balcony, you could go upstairs and open Well, the Squire had a balcony. Did it? Yeah, uh, she, yeah, because... I went to the playhouse, uh. now, but it was, uh, you know, it was, that was a big deal to go to the movies, even though we, we, we did it a, a lot. And all the stores, uh, you mentioned the Woolworths, the Walls Music, yeah. uh, all those places were... Um, all, well, Wool Woolworths was a big chain, but Walls Music was a small shop owned by a guy, Mr. Walls. And, uh, they Did were they all... have little listening booths where no. you could listen to records, mm. or you had to know what you wanted no, when you, you went to, in? You had, you had to, to know, know what, what you, you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they had, you know, aisles, and the records were all up and down the aisles, and little paper sleeves, and, and uh, it was interesting. The other thing is, Great Neck had its own bus company, Universal Auto Bus. Uh, that was the town bus, and it was owned by a local family, and uh, it could be an adventure going for a ride on the bus, because <laughs> they ran most of the time, <laughs> and stopped most of the time. Well, well the bus driver was a bookie. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> My father told me that the bus driver was booky. And I, so I one day took my money and I wanted to give it to him to place a bet. And I must have been about I don't know, 10 years old. <laughs> and he was like, he didn't know what to say about that one. I, I, he was like, <laughs> you had a team you wanted to bet on and everything. Not a team, a horse. A horse, oh, okay. <laughs> Where did the horses run? Well, Where? when I was a kid, my I always knew my father went up to the the bar on Middle Neck Road, O'Connor's, which became the Baker Hill Tavern. And I knew, and that's where they bet. And so I was a kid, what did I know? I thought the racetrack was behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know that the racetrack wasn't anywhere in Great Neck, though there was a racetrack in Great Neck. But that's where the high school is. Right. And they raced horses there? Bro at the high Bro school? Brokaw, yeah. yeah. It was before the high school, yeah. Huh. Yeah. We don't remember it, but that's, yeah, what yeah. that's where it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was I was very sad day that I found out the racetrack wasn't behind O'Connor's. Yeah, it's it like when I, my father used to say he was shooting the bull when he would meet with his old man, and I really <laughs> thought they were out there shooting the bull. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. yeah. yeah so um, then, in the were there special th other things in the winter time that uh, were fun to do? What about the the hill for the sledding hill? Well, that was the road. In our Not for me. In the, well, yeah, you were you were down in another area, but Croydon Avenue. Oh, oh, right. Is, uh, where we used to go and sled down down the hill, and, and the village was very good. They, that was the last road that they would put sand down, hmm. and uh, they'd sometimes even barricade it off and keep it closed for a, a day or so, so the kids could in, in, enjoy it. You know, today. Remember the soapbox you know, derby. Soapbox, oh, oh yes, that was a Fairview huge, Avenue yeah. Hill. Fairview yeah. Avenue Hill. They had a soapbox derby there one time, and who came but Captain Video? Oh. This was like a huge deal, and I don't even know who organized it. I have no idea. Yeah. All I know is that it was like a huge deal, and they raced down the hill. Yeah. And Captain Video was there. Oh, oh wow. A memorable day. Too bad we don't have a picture of that. I don't know. My father was a dead ringer for the Merry Mailman, though. And people used to say, oh, that's a Merry Mailman. And I'm, my father would be like, <laughs> no, I don't think so. so. You don't know who the Merry Mailman was. It was a TV show. Yeah, we didn't have it down no, south. No. Yeah, there was, uh, he came, the, the real Merry Mailman came to the Village Green for something one year. And, and everybody found out he was really a nasty guy. <laughs> 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 he was great on TV, but... <laughs> We used to sled in Kings Point Park, and they still oh. sled in Kings Point Park. Yep. But where we used to go wasn't where the sled hill is now. There's a there's a rifle range in Kings Point Park, and we used to go where the rifle. I don't even now. If you look at it, it doesn't look that steep, but at the time it went pretty well. We liked it. Yeah. But so it uh, really sounds like you had a lot of stuff going on all the time. Summertime, wintertime, there were always. Always things to do. Always, and it, and it was very little, if anything, that was really organized. We could always find something to do. 
We could go down by the brook, down by Piccadilly Road, and would walk along the brook just for something to do. Uh, there were vacant lots, we'd dig a hole. We used to always say we're going to dig a hole to China. I think the deepest we ever got was two and a half feet. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but that was a project. How many times as little kids would, you know, this was the, the, the big thing. My friend Jimmy Barton, he said, well, he got a bag of gunpowder. And so <laughs> he was digging holes and putting a little gunpowder in the hole and throwing a match in. <laughs> he joined the army after this, by the way. Found and, some use yeah. for it. <laughs> and he blew his eyebrows off. He put too much gunpowder in one day. That was. <laughs> Did they ever grow back? Uh, yeah, he's fine today. <laughs> he moved to Pennsylvania, but yeah, he, it was pretty exciting. His father worked at the academy, and somehow he got that gunpowder. I don't know. Mm. Down the Merchant Marine Academy, when I was a kid, the next to right next to the gates, it's still unbelievable to me that they had. That's where they had these, um, I guess they were teaching people how to run atomic submarines or something, and they had radiation warnings on the building. And to this day, I'm, I was like, I wonder how exposed we were. Can you imagine? Well, did you have a lot of drills at school? Did you have... Uh, oh, sure. Yep, you had to get under get the under desk. Get under the desk, yep. big help. And uh, any uh, shelters? Were there any shelters here? I don't think yes, there, there, were, there, there were some, uh, mainly in the schools, and they had uh, supplies, they had water really? and food and cots. I yes. don't think St. Ellis did. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the public schools did. <laughs> and and, and uh, they, they were all run by civil defense. There was a civil defense unit in Great Neck. Um, they actually had a building where they used a, a, as an office. And in the 1950s, there were spotters on top of the old Colony Hotel yeah. because they, want, they, they were afraid of an air attack. And uh, the, there were volunteers who went up and, and watched w well into the 50s. Where was that hotel? I was just going to tell you, it was on the corner of Grace and Bond. Where the apartment house is now. Were there other hotels too? Well, there was the one on Northern Boulevard. Yeah, the, yeah, there were, there were <laughs> not, in, not in downtown Great Neck, not mainly in, in, in Great Neck. The, the Bayberry Hotel was built, I guess, maybe in the 60s, late 60s. There wasn't a hotel by the station? No, I, I don't, th no. Where Brooks's was? No, no. that was always, uh, that was always Just the a, row of like stores. Those are actually some of the oldest buildings still in, in, in Great Neck. Where Dunkin' Donuts is now. Where Dunkin' Donuts is. Those are? Yeah. yeah. Dunkin' Donuts is down by the station. Towards, down by the towards station. Bond Street, those yeah. rows of stores, are, right. they, they go back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. You know, Brooks's Tavern, Club Tavern was the official name where Dunkin' Donuts is there. It was a speakeasy in Prohibition times. When did they build the bridge over the railroad track? The, which one? The, 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 the Middle Neck Road Bridge? Middle Neck Road. That was before us. Yeah. That was before yeah. you. That was somewhere around 1930, early 30s. But the other bridge yeah. was, the bridge on Bayview Avenue was moved. Yes. And I remember that because for years you could see where the old bridge was. The old bridge was west of where the bridge is now. So and the one near Cutter Mill. Yes. That's what the one you're talking about. Right. And there used to be a little place where they had horses down by where the, where the water authority is now. Well, it was there then anyway, yeah. but there was like a little horse place, yep. and if you get, got to go riding down there. Oh, they, so they had stables. That was, well, I, yeah. I think it was really just little, you know, for little kids. A little, little privately kids. run thing. Yeah. yeah, but that was a big deal if you got to go down there. And then East Shore Road, there was, before the trestle was totally put across East Shore Road, um, there was a, a tunnel. A there, tunnel. A tunnel. And that was, there were terrible accidents. Yeah, it was really, it was, it was really It was blind awful. and it was narrow and there were a lot of head-on collisions in the tunnel. And then they finally uh, did away with that and they finished the trestle over East Shore Road. So the, where did the tunnel begin in the end? It just was under it where was the, just railroad, under the railroad, railroad tracks. tracks. Just under the railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Really That must have been scary. Do you remember going through it? Oh, yeah, sure. sure. I'll tell you How what many was lanes was it? Well, that was part of the problem. It was like one and a half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. The other thing that was a problem was up on, up by Kings Point, there was a hairpin turn. If you went down Hicks Lane and you were going on to East Shore Road, where it kind of curves now, it used to be a hairpin turn. And they had terrible accidents there. There was always something going on there. It was yeah. very dangerous. 
When did that get changed? When did it get kind of smoothed out? I think it's somewhere in the 60s. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the, um, the bridge by the library. That was a narrow little bridge, and there were some terrible accidents there, and a couple of people killed. Yeah. Uh, there was a big tree. They used to call it the hangman's tree. Um, near uh, just I guess it would be just south of the library and that was a big deal when they cut that down because people didn't want to cut it down they wanted to preserve it and uh, finally they, too many people ran into it they just said that uh, so there a lot of things that went on a yeah. lot of things. Bayview Avenue had a lot of accidents. Yes. Yeah and there's we, a curve there that's uh, still pretty bad. Right. Yeah. It's still not great but there hasn't been anything lately thank God knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. And the Merchant Marine Academy kids oh, were always have an accident. Yeah, some, some real humdingers. Yeah. And Steamboat Road. Steamboat Road has changed since I was a kid. It's changed enormously. Steamboat Road was not a safe place to walk when you were a kid. Like my father, when I moved to Steamboat Road, I was nine, and at the bottom of the hill opposite Kings Point Park, there was a little store that we called the Old Ladies, and it was a candy store. And obviously, it was run by this old lady, and she had penny candy in jars and the whole everybody in the neighborhood would go down there and buy it was so unsanitary I can't even describe how unsanitary it was <laughs> but um, that was that was one of our fun things that we did but I wasn't allowed to walk past that because it wasn't safe hmm. it's a thousand times better now than it was then yeah. oh I, I wanted to I know we're getting close to the time running out it's gone very fast uh, but I know that you had told me once upon a time about your father going over to uh, Jason Avenue when he was a kid and seeing the Marx Brothers. Well, not when he was a kid, but yeah, the Marx Brothers lived in Great Neck. And one of the things that they would do, the people in Great Neck would do for entertainment on a Sunday afternoon was to go over to the family house on, on Jason Avenue and watch the Marx Brothers because they were as nutty off camera as they were on camera. And he used to talk about that, that uh, uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun to jump out the windows into the bushes and everything you can imagine. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, the time went very fast. Um, the uh, Historical Society knows that uh, people that are involved with it, as both of you are, that uh, there are just some great stories about Great Neck uh, from many different vantage points. And so uh, as we start this project, we're going to invite other people who grew up in Great Neck or who had a unique experience in Great Neck to get in touch with us and tell us about uh, their experiences because it, these are the things that make history really interesting and fun and exciting. Sometimes people think history is dull, but certainly not. Well, I encourage anybody that wants to to go down to All Saints Cemetery and see uh, the names on names. those graves, and you'll say, oh my God, there's this street and that street, and they're all named after people that lived there and had property there. And, and really gave a lot to this community. Each one with a story. Each one with a story. Right. So thank you for being here today, and uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have part two. <laughs> of, of, we didn't even get into your teenage years. No, we didn't even scratch the more. surface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, and uh, we'll provide all the information about how to get in touch with the Historical Society members because we'd love to have your stories, too. Thank you.